Yeah. So I'm gonna say let's play back to the video right now. Thank you for visiting us since the very beginning. I think it's a great initiative, so thanks to you also for organizing this. And today I will be talking a bit about TMEC triplet networks. I have recently played a little bit with them. Actually, I I implemented them recently in PyTorch kind of as a personal project. I have been working with them before, and I will be I will tell you a bit what they are and uh, how can they be implemented in here. Uh, okay, yeah. So I'll start by saying a bit what they can be used for. Uh, so what is metric learning, which they are often used for. I'll explain what I see on the stupid networks, it shows up code, and then it shows some smarter code, how this can be implemented. Uh, okay, so let's start with metric learning. Uh, assume we have a task to determine if these two pictures represent the same person. We already know as humans that it's Black Widow if you familiar with Marvel, Marvel Cinematic Universe or Scarlett Johansson if you're not. But uh, how can computers do this? So the simple naive thing that comes to mind is we can just uh, compute the distance between these two images as uh, Euclidean distance uh, between pixel values of this image. It's like a very nice approach, but let's see what we can do with that. Uh, we get some value, some distance. We don't know what it really means, but let's see if these two uh, pictures uh, also represent the same person. Let's apply the same approach, and the distance here is actually smaller. So it would appear that Iron Man and Black Widow are the same people, but not these two pictures. Uh, well, it's not very smart, it's not very good. So how can we do it better? Uh, one thing we can do is uh, try to think of the better features that we can, obviously, like just taking pixel values, it's stupid. So let's apply some function that will extract some pictures and uh, well, the question is, what is this, what is this function? But uh, if we could find a function that would map these images to some other space, maybe uh, some high, more high-level features, maybe we could be able to, uh, to get to work this, this specific distance. And uh, identify correctly if two pictures of faces belong to the same person. So yeah, well, what is this function? How can we, what can we use? Uh, we can extract some engineered features, like, I don't know, color of the eyes, color of the hair, maybe some ratio between some facial features. But, oh, so, well, what we can do is, if we have enough, a lot of data, we can just learn this function. We can try to learn a function that could will map our images to a space where this Euclidean distance is applicable and will give us what we want. So yeah, what we basically want to do is metric embedding learning, which means that we will map similarly, semantically similar points to a space where uh, those points are close metric. So we can fix a metric, for example, still use this Euclidean distance, but we will map our points that we want to uh, somehow compare to, to this space where these metric properties are uh, uh, are then really satisfied. So, so if we have some set of images, we would map it to them in this example to dimensional space where uh, where these vectors of the same people would be mm, brought together. Okay, so what are some applications for this? Uh, the one that I actually already talked about is biometrics. I presented kind of a case for face recognition, but we could extend it to our speaker recognition, fingerprint recognition, like any other biometrics that, that comes to mind. Um, matching, because it doesn't always have to be, uh, it doesn't always have to be in the same domain, this comparison, this, this, this metric between uh, the things that we want to compare. 
we could uh, want to try to match text to the image and, and have such a mapping, such embeddings that in this mapped space uh, image, uh, the distance between image and the distance between text describing this image it will be it will be similar. Mm. One example is the script I was mentioned. This is like if someone did something with classic, more classical computer vision, uh, where to extract, uh, you identify objects. What we all often do is extract some key points, and then we describe them uh, with some uh, like, uh, algorithms like sifts or serp. We can do it in a more in a smarter way if we if we just learn the, the best uh, the best method. But what we can do also is that retrieval, for example, image search, we can just uh, uh, we can query a database with an image and find images that are the most similar semantically. So it won't just look at the pixel values or some colors, but it will, if you want to search for things that are similar to semantic space. Uh, simple documents. Then, yeah. And case of learning is basically. Uh, it's just a way we can implement any of these things. When we once we find this this mapping that I talked about, we can um, use it to classify new classes. If we have a very good mapping, we will uh, just uh, need very few examples of a new class that that we haven't seen before and uh, classify uh, using them. So one one of common setting is we would say. Uh, a data set that we want to use for retrieval and uh, extract this, this map mappings, these embeddings, and this is here uh, represented on the right. And at test time, we, we take like some query image, also extract this, this mapping, and just look for nearest neighbors because uh, our metric, uh, because these embeddings have these properties that the closest uh, points. Such as before, will be will represent some of these things. Okay, <coughs> so let's start with uh, CMS network. CMS neural network. I hope most of you is familiar with neural networks in general. It's uh, is a neural network that has two branches. It's, they usually have shared weights, but if it is like a cross domain. If it's like a cross-domain uh, task, if you want to map and uh, map uh, objects from different domains like text and, and objects, it could obviously be a different, different network. But for example, if you are to classify to learn this uh, this method for um, for images, it's often shared shared ways. Uh, it has two inputs. Like here, we have them uh, on the top of the image. And in this example, we would want to match sketches to real images. And to train them, once we have, uh, well, maybe I could say a bit more about this weight sharing, uh, or this architecture. Uh, here is represented a convolutional neural network. It could be basically any, any other network, anything that can be optimized uh, through back propagation using the loss function. Uh, and so, to, so we have we have two inputs. We have two branches that produce our f of x, our mappings, and so how can we train them? Train them in neural networks. We often need a good loss function that will do that. And uh, here is a contrasted loss function that the loops does that. And I know it can look a little bit terrifying, but basically what it does, it makes distance of objects of the same classes as close as possible. And it's represented in this first term of this loss. So, uh, y is the label of a pair. If we have a pair of the same, uh, a pair of images belonging to the same class, y is equal to zero, and uh, we minimize this distance between these embeddings. This f of x for the first and second class. And that's what we want. That's what we would, we would want from this uh, mapping, so that. Uh, images uh, map, so these mappings from the same for images from the same classes are close to each other. On the other hand, we want to make distances of mappings from different classes 
to be separated by some margin. If you specify some margin, and if they are, uh, if y is equal to one, so which means that the um, images belong to other to different classes, we want to them to be separated at least margin n, and this is what this last time does. <coughs> So basically, we try to minimize the, these two things at the same time. Okay, on the other hand, triplet networks have a little bit different approach. Uh, we want to find, instead of training them on pairs of images, we use three examples, an R4, a positive example, which, is, which means it's an object of the same class as an anchor. A negative example, which means it's an object of a different class than an anchor. And during the training, we want to keep the positive example closer to the anchor and keep the negative uh, example uh, further. So, yeah, in this case, we have three branches. Uh, I guess in this image, it is shown as if the, the anchor branch has different weights than the uh, positive and negative, but it can it can be different depending on the task. Uh, often it's all the word weights are shared. So we have three shared three branches with shared weights similar to the uh, CN two. We have three inputs, this anchor positive and negative. And we have triplet loss instead of contrastive loss, which works now for triplets and not reverse. And again, this a piece of formulas. Uh, but what is, it also has a quite intuitive um, explanation. This triplet loss, what it does, it keeps the distance of objects of the same class smaller than distance of the objects from different class by some margin. So before, we just wanted to keep the, the for same standards, we wanted to keep Object from the same class, class as close together as possible. Here we just want the objects from the same class to be closer than some of their objects by some margin. So they don't have to collapse to one point, whereas it would be desirable for the CMS network and contrast of us. <coughs> uh, okay, so how is it usually implemented? We usually sample pairs of triplets, do it randomly extract uh, embeddings, so, so this f of x of the samples, compute the loss on person triplets, and that propagates, so in other words, we just train the network. And here is a scheme like what it looks like. Uh, classically, we use this. Um, we, for example, here we can see a scheme of triplet network when we provide uh, feed the network with and anchors and positives and negatives. We use this network with shared parameters to extract their mappings, their embeddings. We compute the triplet loss, backpropagate to update the parameters and uh, get the, um, and train the network to, to satisfy this, uh, this training loss. And uh, I show a little bit of code of how I implemented it in PyTorch. I would like this framework. It's uh, really, Makes the implementing, implementing even some crazy ideas very simple. Mm, well, it's not that yeah, this is a very crazy idea, but this is uh, how it's implemented. So, okay, on this slide you can see the one piece of this, which is this justice embedding network, this f of x that I was talking about. And uh, as an example, it's just implemented as a simple. Convolutional neural networks just with just two layers of convolutional, convolutional layers and a couple of uh, fully connected layers at the end. Mm. So, yeah, uh, one thing important to note is the last dimension that I used here is just two because it, it was just trained for visualizations. If you have two dimensional embeddings, we can visualize them quite easily, and I will be able to show you. Uh, then show them to you. Mm. Okay, then we have a CMS uh, net module, which is basically wraps the embedding net, processes pairs of inputs, 
and just wants to learn. That's like no, no, not too much, but reason that then I did the define before and uh, extract for a pair the um, two dimensional on the embeddings. And the experiments that I did is on NIST datasets. And NIST, um, I hope most of you heard about this dataset. It's just quite easy image data set for classification of digits between 0 to 10 to get 10 classes. And uh, because we will be training this, and PyTorch, PyTorch gives you like a nice wrapper that automatically downloads the data set and uh, you can use it quite easily for an experiment, usually for classification. But if you want to use it for training the CMS network, uh, you need to implement uh, a like data provider, let's say, that will give you pairs of images in instead of just a batch of images, and uh, pairs with a label whether it's a positive or negative pair, so whether it belongs to the same uh, class or not. So, uh, yeah, this is like a shortened version of it. Uh, you basically, what you do is you override the data set class in PyTorch, you need to implement this get item function and uh, it enables uh, you to use them later. Okay, and then contrastive loss is the thing that I talked about a couple of slides ago. Uh, this is the last, uh, this is this cost function that will be computed on this uh, on these examples and be used to train the network. So, so just as I said before, for uh, pairs of the same from the same class, we want we want the distance between the mappings to be as close to each other, and from the for the uh, examples from different classes, we want to keep some margins between them. Okay. okay, I don't think you, it's very clear what happens here, but basically what we need to do with the, uh, the parts that I just showed, we need to initialize this CMS data sets, mm. initialize data loaders, initialize the embedding net, the CMS net, <laughs> plus the loss, so all these bolded uh, things, uh, an optimizer, and we just try I, I implemented a fit function that uh, that is able to work with different loaders and different models and endless functions and so so that it's um, it's quite easy. It's not that easy in in Python to, as it is in Keras, but it enables us to, to train this. Uh, but yeah, you can automate some of this work if you write one one function for it. And so this is what you can get. If we train the CMS network on a means data set this way, on the left we have this visualized this embeddings for the train set, on the right for the validation set. And as you can see, we basically got what we want. Our uh, the digits, embeddings of the digits from different different digits are close, very close together and uh, separated by, by some margin. It's not that Built on these validation data sets, but it's obviously perhaps some more regularization might be needed. Okay, and triplet network is the uh, new implementation is quite similar. Uh, now, instead of uh, processing two inputs with embedding net, we process three inputs, getting three embeddings. Um, similarly, we need to Write this uh, triplet list uh, provide, uh, data provider. The, I say data provider, but it's a data set class in Python where we sample this arm for positive and negative examples. Mm. Okay, and this is what we get with with the uh, mm, triplet network. It doesn't look as good as as see on this case, uh, mostly because, well, first of all, the objective function is different. We didn't want the embeddings to be very close to each other. We just wanted to keep some margin between them. 
but also because uh, training these children networks can be problematic sometimes. And in a second, I will tell, I will tell you why. Oh, yeah, problems with training. So, one problem is that if we if we are to process the data sets and we want to train them using pairs or triplets, our uh, number of possible pairs grows uh, quadra quadratically, number of possible triplets grows uh, cubically, so it's infeasible really to process them all. And uh, maybe it wouldn't be an issue, but it is even more because uh, when we train the network in such a way, very often uh, this, uh, this embedding network, this f of x, uh, quickly learns to map trivial examples. So if we provide this random pairs or random triplets, as we did before, it's very uninformative and uh, it really doesn't give uh, these examples. Uh, yeah, the network can learn from them. Let's make it, make it more intuitive. Uh, if we sample, if we were to train these embeddings for faces, if we choose them randomly, often we will choose faces from um, of males and females, and probably the, the network already knows that they will be quite separated. So a random selection isn't the best option here. And yeah, also it's very nice because if we are using this uh, if we are providing the network, for, for example, if we train for uh, the triplet network, we're providing B, uh, B triplets. So basically, if our network, now our network processes three times B images, uh, but only, oh, but there are, but uh, this is only to, complete, to compute this uh, triplet loss on uh, be triggered, but we, we could. Why not? Why can't we use the entire batch to for, for uh, constructing different triplets? Like we already use this computer power to compute these embeddings. It seems like a waste to compute these embeddings and then use it just for one triplet. Once we why we could do it more efficiently. So yeah, what can we do to make it better? Uh, and the answer is on my negative mining. And what I mean by that is to first extract the embeddings from a batch of examples, which is something that we would normally do if we train any neural network. We usually process it in batches. Uh, we compute the loss on, on a batch of uh, on a batch of uh, examples. Mm, and uh, from this from these embeddings. Try to find the most informative pairs or uh, triplets uh, that will allow us for better training. By the most informative, I mean hard. By hard, I mean the ones that have a large loss value, either contrasting loss or triplet loss in CMEs or triplet networks. So, uh, our new approach would be to first sample a mini batch in a smarter way. Maybe because if we have a lot of classes, if we just if we just sample the a mini batch randomly, we wouldn't probably have um, many examples from the same class, and that's what we need to create these pairs or triplets. So what is often done, we first sample some number of classes that we want in a mini batch, and from each class some number of uh, samples so that we can uh, we can uh, create many many pairs of triplets from the same looking class. The triplets are not the same looking class of triplets with anthropocentric and embeddings. We extract then extract the embedding for an entire mini batch and uh, within this mini batch using these extracted embeddings uh, we can find these hard pairs or triplets. So, uh, as I said, which, which are, as I said, the ones that create a positive loss. We compute this loss and back propagate, train the network. So, this is, this, this is a scheme for this ablated process. Um, yeah, we process it and we process the 
a mini batch with the, the, with the triplets and then propagate for, for this many, many, many numbers of triplets uh, with one forward pass. And again, wider documentation, I recommend wider. Uh, so we need to change the definition of our last editor. Now it will take not a pair of objects, it will take in the entire batch of embeddings and original labels so that it can uh, so that it can get its hard first. Uh, the way I implemented this, it, this is I provide this first selector object that will be able to uh, return this hard first based on um, the embeddings and the and targets. This is the, the biggest difference. This first selector, uh, we can think of different strategies for, for selecting first or treatments. Uh, in, for, for about the triplets I will talk in a while, but for the first, we can just select them all. If, if it's not a very big batch, mm, it shouldn't be a problem. It should be still did quite uh, quickly. But uh, we can also use these embeddings to select these hard, hard mechanics. <coughs> so uh, we can, for example, use all the positive pairs because for them the loss is always positive because they never collapse to one point and select the hardest negatives matching the number of, of uh, positive pairs. Mm, so we can compute the distance matrix between these mappings and select the most important points. Mm, okay, and this uh, training of such uh, of this network is Similar and different <laughs> at the same time. We need to create this batch, batch sampler object that will release something of mini batch that I talked about. We provide it to the mm, data loader and we train the network. We just define the embedding path now. We don't need this CME step. This is all the process of uh, processing pairs or triplets is now moved to the loss function. Mm, and that's, that's it. That's the all the differences between the training. And it allows us to, to process within one, one pass. We can process uh, here, here we have n passes equal to 10 and n samples equal to 25. Mm, we can calculate it, but it's uh, a few thousands of pairs instead of uh, 125 if, if we were to use it. In, Classical way. So here's what it looks like. It's actually very similar, but uh, we'll show why it isn't advantages later. Uh, okay. Uh, hmm. I think I didn't update this slide, but it's basically, uh, basically, it's online traffic process is very similar. Instead of a pair selector, we have a triplet selector. That, that will, uh, that will um, get these anchors, positive and negatives. Yeah, so, so this is how it can be done. Uh, and there are many more strategies here, and so there are some entire publications that tell what, what are advantages and disadvantages of, of some of them. And maybe selecting all the triplets is not really feasible. Mm, I mean, it creates, there are many of them, it's, it grows quickly, uh, the end processing takes uh, quite a long time. Mm. One thing that is often done is just we take all the positive pairs, and for each positive pair, we can take the hardest negative example. Or, or this is also not, maybe not the best, because then for, for each anchor, the hardest an example is always the same, but we can choose a random hard example, and this uh, should make the training quicker. Uh, okay, so these are visualizations of what it looks like now, although maybe uh, we can see now yet if it's really better or not. Mm, okay, but here we have a comparison for the NIST data set between this classical and online mining 
And to be honest, yeah, I don't see uh, if it's very really better. But this data set is a really easy one uh, and can really be used for, for benchmarking like this. That's why I also checked what it looks like on a fashion feminist data set, which is a very similar in terms of um, size. It has the same number of samples, the same number of classes. Also, images 28 by 28 pixels, but instead of digits, it represents uh, 10 types of uh, clothing. And uh, in here, you can see that this training of these two networks, the classical one, and using this online triplet mining, took about the same time. But we can see that it's much better separated, which is because we were able to process more, uh, more triplets. Uh, and select the hard ones. Uh, sorry, not snippets. First, this is the CMS network. Yeah. Okay. And this is what it looks like for the triplet network. And here, even for the minis, even in case of minis data sets, which is easy and should be easy to train because this process of uh, triplet selection is quite important. We can see how we can benefit if we if we just if we do it the smart way and select the hard triplets within the Venom image, we, we get much better separation between classes. And the same goes for fashion means I think the differences may be even better here. Uh, many of the classes, you know, could be trained in a classical way, they overlap, but uh, here uh, we can see that they quite well separated. And let's remember that this, this is for the case of two-dimensional embeddings, which is not very practical if we were to train a system that should work, but for, this is just for visualization purposes. Normally, we would use uh, an embeddings that are much with much higher dimensionality, and uh, this would probably lead to more separable classes. Okay, and I think that's it. Thank you. Are we going to have any questions? So, any questions now? We have a question here, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, so maybe uh, you try to do like more dimensions in embedding and then post-processing to drop the dimensionality of the data to, like, to show it. So. I mean, I didn't do this in these experiments, but yet, basically that's what you would do for visualization. You could train a much higher dimensionality and then use, use TC, or TCA maybe not the best, but probably TC would allow you for dimensionality reduction and so to see what it looks like. It's probably a good idea to, to see they are better separated better. But then also this if you use techniques like this, the relative distance isn't isn't kept after applying this for reduction. So for visualization for both purposes, I would suggest trying to manage more embeddings. And maybe one more question. Uh, maybe you said that but uh, what do you use as distance between embeddings side? Uh, I just used uh, empty dimensions, mm -hmm. but one thing that's all, often used is cosine, which is equivalent to often it's implemented as first normalizing the vectors to units, then and then just using the same uh, empty dimensions. One more question. Question about uh, the following thing. You talked about different communications of uh, cells and triple networks. Uh, and uh, can you tell at least uh, what was the improvement in cosmetics and security maybe one uh, when you tried the classical approach and then the more advanced part? And can you tell that you could also influence on the performance of the model? Was it slower or was it uh, faster? Or well, when it comes to the performance of the model, of the model, it doesn't make any difference because the 
the base network, this embedded network is the same for both approaches for training. And you asked about accuracy comparisons. Uh, I haven't done it in a while, but a couple of jobs ago I was playing with base, uh, base uh, recognition systems. And using this classical approach, basically the results were rubbish. You couldn't really train this network to uh, get really valuable embeddings. It's in the case when you have many classes, like thousands of them, and uh, and you want these embeddings to work for the new problem, for, for new cases, like for these k-shots problem. And only when we switch to the, to the smart way, to on this online hard negative mining, then we are able to get some reasonable results. Okay, thank you so much for that. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, the boss.